Welcome to this extended abstract loose watercolour painting to get you started in watercolour. This tutorial is an extended version of the tutorial I published last November in 2021. It's to give you an idea of the extended tutorials that I have available on my Patreon membership, along with the exclusive tutorials and access to downloadable outline sketches. So, shall we get started? I've sketched out this little scene using an HB pencil onto 300 grams rough watercolour paper, 9 by 12 inches. It's on a block. The reason why I use blocks is so it stops all the warping of the watercolour paper when I use lots of wet in wet washes. I like to use washi tape around the edge because it gives a lovely white border at, at the end of the painting and it really presents your work well. I'm using a wax resist tape technique with this wax crayon here. You could use a candle or even an oil, white oil pastel. I'm rubbing it gently onto the watercolour paper um, to sort of represent and resist the waves or the foam um, coming into the shoreline there. And it's to create a little bit of light in the water. I'm also going to put a little bit on the cliff tops as well to reserve light areas. You could use masking fluid if you wanted to for this purpose as well. But if you're starting starting out or you want to get started in watercolour and you want to get yourself inspired it's quite nice to use these sorts of techniques so I'm just sort of finishing off here and I'm going to start wetting the paper now with a large flat soft brush you can use any sort of mop brush a hake and just really sort of wet all of the land area here if you look at the photograph I'm going to really simplify this area and just paint wet in wet I've decided not to paint the sky first of all I've decided to concentrate on the grass areas instead just for the fun of it and to experiment as well so I've wet the surface and I'm just pulling out some green appetite genuine by Daniel Smith but you could use sap green or mix your own green using a blue and yellow this is wet in wet and I'm painting using my size 10 round brush I'm just putting a little bit of French ochre in there you could use quinacridone gold or raw sienna as well and just mixing those colours literally in the palette but also on the watercolour paper working wet in wet just really a lots of this in this foreground area here creating lots of strong colours I'm also adding a little bit of the quinacridone rust here you could use a touch of burnt sienna working damp into wet I'm now adding a little bit of Payne's grey quite a creamy mixture working damp into wet in the foreground there I'm sprinkling on some table salt while the paint is damp and I'm going to let that dry naturally. Meanwhile I'm using a plastic store card cut up just pulling out this damp paint to create some grasses and textures in the foreground here keeping everything really simple. It's a really fun way of using and painting watercolours in this really loose semi-abstract style. You know you're creating happy accidents on the way. I'm using some cerulean blue now mixing it up to create a sort of a milky consistency working wet on dry with my size 14 round brush and just creating sort of horizontal marks there sort of coming up to the shoreline there as you can see where the wax resist is working quite nicely so it's protecting that light area there I'm just adding a little bit more cerulean and just working my way up to the horizon line using the tip of the brush and just trying to keep that quite nice and straight but I'm going to be painting this horizon a bit of wet into wet so I'm not going to worry too much I'm using the belly of the brush as well to create some nice dry brush effects here and there especially when the sea is coming up to the shoreline and at the edge of the cliffs as well I'm mixing up a little bit of turquoise now and I'm going to use my plastic card to print this colour um, with a little bit of the cerulean as well onto the damp sea area. So make sure your paint's not too wet. 
you'll lose control but it creates a lovely sort of turquoise effect the paint's a lot creamier and I'm just sort of making these marks sort of damp into damp into the C area there just trying to be random I've also got a little bit of Payne's grey on there just to create some darks as well coming into the more the foreground area of the C I'm just applying a little bit more Payne's grey and turquoise mixed together painting damp into damp I've decided to use a little bit of the this pink colour here along with the turquoise almost sort of mixing the colours with the card on the palette there to get a lovely sort of blue violet colour. I'm using this plastic card as well to create and paint or print even some distant land wet on dry but it's catching the wet surface of the sea area there I've added a little bit of pink and the blue the turquoise blue here just to give an impression of distant land and I'm spritzing now with my spritzer bottles so the colour that I've used to create the distant land is also going to act as the sky as well it's going to run up into the sky to create a lovely soft sort of violet blue sky there so I'm tilting upside down and just really spritzing really quite close with the water just to get that thick creamy paint moving and tilting don't sort of be afraid of this see what happens you can see the pinks coming out the blue the turquoise blue and the cerulean creating some lovely granulation as well I'm tilting to the left here letting everything run down do have your spritzer bottle on standby as well here I am spritzing again just to get the paint moving it's going to be a lovely light sky because there's so much happening in this painting I wanted to keep the sky quite sort of small narrow and quite pale as well so I'm tilting away here trying to hopefully get some happy accidents as well so I'm tipping and wiping my the excess water there with the paper towels you can see it's created a nice atmospheric look there using my size 6 brush now with a mix of Payne's grey with a touch of that violet blue colour that I made and a touch of the turquoise colour as well working damp into damp smoothing out that horizon area there it really does create a lovely atmospheric effect there just working with the size 6 brush don't be afraid of it running into the sky because it's creating those sort of distant that distant land there with the soft edges that recede so it looks much further away going back with the card again and just defining some of the cliffs here the top of the cliffs using the green appetite genuine working damp into damp you can see in the foreground there the salt is actually working quite nicely creating textures what it does it sort of soaks up the paint and creates these lovely light textured marks there it can be quite exciting you can see I'm still sort of using the card for the distant land here with a mixture of the turquoise and a little bit of the green appetite genuine really watering down this wash adding a touch of the violet again to create this sort of cooler paler color that will recede to create depth in your painting I'm using a little bit of quinacridone rust here you could use burnt sienna and some orange as well I wanted this part of the cliff here to be the focal point so that color really stands out I'm using my size 10 brush working wet on dry but also pushing it up against the damp green edges as well using the orange and the quinacridone rust you could use burnt sienna and just sort of having it all drizzling down lots of water lots of orange in there really sort of lovely bright color really sort of playing around with the watercolour here letting it all sort of run into the damp green paint just waiting for a happy accident to happen as well and I'm just using a little bit of the green appetite genuine a touch of Payne's grey even a little bit of violet and just sort of painting the cliffs just behind there and also the foreground cliff as well coming down working wet on dry I'm actually lifting out some of that orange I felt it was a little bit bright I'm adding a little bit of water there to help me lift off with my paper towel I'm adding a little bit of yellow now to the surface really you can see this is very very wet and I'm hoping I'll get some exciting happy accidents and some back runs there I'm using a little bit more of this yellow here in the distance working wet on dry and just finessing the cliffs here using my size 10 brush anything in the distance is a lot more watery so when it dries it dries a lot paler I'm just dropping in a little bit of the quinacridone rust here just softening 
this sort of cliff in the middle here but don't want it to come forward too much softening this hard edge here in the distance as well everything now I'm trying to think to myself less is more I don't want the background to come forward so I'm trying to keep everything pale and soft dampening everything with my clean brush I'm always rinsing my brush to make sure that it's it's damp and it's clean which is what I'm doing now just pulling the paint along that shore really with a very dilute brush and again as I say just keep rinsing it and then use that damp brush again gliding it along the shore in the foreground creating a very pale wash I'm just tilting my painting here adding some water to this distant land I felt it was a bit sort of muddy looking actually so I'm just using my pipette clean water and letting everything run off it creates more light and it gets rid of that sort of muddy color that I felt that I had there I quite like using a pipette because you're not actually touching the paper at all and I'm just softening now with my brush there adding a little bit of the green appetite genuine now working wet in wet in the distance here so it's gonna be paler as well it's all quite fuzzy again I'm tilting to the right here and letting the paint sort of run off and also to make sure it's not too dark I'm also using my size 10 brush and adding a little bit of green appetite genuine damp into damp some sort of fuzzy darker grasses there just to create that depth so everything's fuzzy and light in the distance and darker in the foreground there so I thought something needs to be done with the bottom of these rocks here so I'm just using my plastic card using a little bit of Payne's Grey touch of turquoise I mean what's quite nice when you've got the paints like this you can dip in and just see what happens I've got a little bit of the quinacridone rust as well and just sort of adding this creamy dark color damp into damp and using the corner of the card now to scratch into the damp surface and pull that dark paint up to create texture and detail with some creamy Payne's grey I'm also printing at the top of the cliff there using the card printing damp into damp onto the top of the cliffs there just to define them a little bit more with the green appetite genuine again you could use something like sap green with a touch of Payne's grey I'm also adding a little bit of Payne's grey now to the bottom of the cliffs there to sort of show a little bit of darks there and to have that contrast between the sea and the rocks as well and using the card which is so much fun you can be so creative with this card and it takes away all of those reservations you may have with watercolor worried about making mistakes when you've got the card in the hand it kind of frees you up and allows you to create something I'm sort of not copying this photograph what I'm doing is interpreting it I'm using the photograph as a reference I don't want to copy every little detail it's a scene that I'm familiar with I took this photograph the other day it's in Milford on Sea and it's a view towards Barton cliff tops I want to give that feeling that I had as well and that's where the abstraction comes in a little bit not sort of painting all the details not making things look realistic just going with the flow of the painting seeing where it takes me so it doesn't have to end up looking like that photo as you can see with this smaller plastic card I'm sort of carving these cliff tops here using my mostly Payne's Grey with some of the quinacridone rust and the marks in the distance are smaller and much more defined in the sort of middle ground and coming into the foreground area and I'm using a lot of sort of dry not brush but dry card effects as well because the paper is rough so it's catching the tooth of the paper I'm working now in the distance here damp into damp as well with the plastic card I'm going to swap now to my size 10 brush it's just really water and I'm using the damp paint that's on these sort of cliffs to create some shadows on there and some more details here and there as you saw there I sort of swiped with my fingertips as well just to push that color back it was a little bit dark I'm just using this same sort of damp brush just to soften the foreground here these cliffs and to shape them more as well with this very sort of dilute Payne's gray color I wasn't sure about that mark so I've just lifted a little bit off with my paint 
paper towel as well just to push that back that's the great thing about this it's very instinctive this abstract style of painting and if you're not happy with something just wet it with water and just lift off with a paper towel I'm using the size 10 brush now just painting in very sort of dilute quinacridone rust just to define those foreground cliffs a little bit more and just softening as well I'm sort of breaking all the rules because I'm using wet into damp paint but I don't mind if I get a few backgrounds here and there I welcome them because it creates some lovely textures as well so I'm just softening um, these marks here and just blending it into the sea I felt it was standing out too much and now I've sort of created a horrible mark there as well so what I'm going to do because obviously everything's still damp I haven't dried anything I'm just going to get my spritzer bottle and spritz that away rather than using my brush I find it it's sort of so much cleaner and it just I usually try to spritz away to the nearest edge as well and collect it all up with my paper towel let it all run off and soften everything there and sometimes it creates a little bit more light as you're spritzing off a little bit of the sea color as well which hasn't thoroughly dried I'm just mopping up there and what I quite like is that some of the rocks have bled into the sea some of the colors especially that sort of green appetite genuine towards the top there has bled beautifully into the sea to create some atmospheric effects as you can see here I've been busy lifting off some lighter grasses with this damp paint in the foreground using my plastic card so the shine sort of just left the paper now so it lifts off if you find that it's sort of the paint's running back in it's a bit too soon so wait just a little bit longer and then have another go but it does create some lovely light grasses in the foreground there creating depth so I'm tapping my plastic card into the turquoise into the green appetite genuine and I just wanted to define this sort of main star of the show part of the cliffs here and sort of tapping in damp into damp just to really sort of create a dark against that sort of orangey sort of rusty color on the cliffs there just working um, towards the right hand side of the painting there to finish that off I'm using the plastic card now the painting hasn't dried thoroughly and I'm just sort of using very creamy green appetite genuine could use a touch of the Payne's grey as well and just sort of painting some grasses towards the edge of the cliff top here in the foreground there and it sort of separates the sort of seashore as well from the cliff top um, creating some depth and height hopefully as well so that the the sort of sea and the shoreline there looks like it's further down and you can scratch into that creamy green paint as well and just have some fun with it and I'm just painting or printing again some smaller grasses um, sort of more towards the middle ground there again to create depth still using that green appetite genuine so the darker bigger marks are in that bottom left hand corner and just lifting off a little bit here as well especially because this is near the sort of focal point of the painting there so it really draws your eye in and I'm using my size 6 brush here and just painting a little bit more dark on the cliff top there just again Again, to really bring out that sort of light orangey color of the cliff as well really nice contrast so just taking my time here and again I'm not too worried about breaking the watercolor rules adding a sort of a wet into a drying paint so I'm just using the tip of this size 6 brush and just sort of trying to sort out the edge of this cliff here I think I kind of went a little bit wrong so I just want to sort that out and also to paint some marks with the quinacridone rust sort of damp into damp but also softening again with my clean size 6 brush there I'm using some dilute green appetite genuine here and just sort of painting some grasses here and just trying to soften this dark corner I felt it was leading the eye out of the painting there so I've softened it back so your eye goes back into that painting I'm also using some really dilute Payne's grey here just to define the front of the cliffs there with my size 6 brush I'm going to allow my painting now to dry naturally here is the painting dried and you can see the salt has really worked well in the foreground they're creating some lovely light textures I'm using some white gouache now and I'm spattering the foreground rocks working wet on dry to create some texture to give the illusion of a wave crashing against the rocks even though it's not in the photograph I just like to do this and it also stops me from overworking my paintings I'm mixing up some of the cerulean with a touch of pink here 
and I've decided to add a touch of white as well so you've got these light sort of violet flowers I'm going to spatter that on the foreground grasses wet on dry as well just to create a little bit more interest and detail and a bit of colour as well I'm removing the washi tape now to reveal a lovely light border and it gives me time to assess to see if I need to do any more to my painting but I think I'll leave it there for now. I'm really pleased with it and I really hope you're inspired to have a go at working in this abstract style using the spritzer bottle and the card and sort of using a photograph as a reference but going your own way and getting you started. If you have any questions about this tutorial please put them in the comments section below and if you'd like to see more content like this don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials and for those of you that would like to learn more about watercolor painting and get access to my exclusive weekly tutorials why not think about joining my patreon membership details about the membership can be found in the description below thank you so much for watching happy painting Bye for now.